five minutes stories by mary louisa molesworth the goblin face when i was a very little girl i spent a good deal of my life in a large old-fashioned house in a very out-of-the-way part of scotland it was not really our home but it almost seemed so for we used to go there as soon as the fine mild weather set in and stay till the shortening days and the first frosts told of winter's approach it was the home of our uncle my mother's only brother and as he had never married and she was many years younger than he she seemed to him more like his daughter than his sister and he was never so happy as when he had her and all us children to brighten up his rather gloomy old house gloomy it might be in appearance but in nothing else for my uncle was the kindest of men and he and all his old servants used to receive us with a welcome that would have made the grimmest of abodes seem sunshiny and cheerful i could tell dozens nay scores of stories of our child life in the old castle of our games in the house and out of doors of the cottages with all of whom we were on most intimate terms all sorts of adventures that befell us but just now i mean only to relate one very short and perhaps not very interesting story because i think it may be of use to some children who may read it i was about five years old when the first cloud came over my happy life i had been ill but though i do not clearly remember the illness and it seemed to me to have been rather pleasant than painful as i was petted and made much of in every way i believe it really was a bad illness and had very much weakened me we went to scotland sooner than usual that year to strengthen me but the weather unluckily was cold and rainy we could not go out much and had to amuse ourselves in the house it was in this way that one of the old servants one day meaning to please us took to telling us ghost stories i was so little that i do not think she thought of me at all the stories were told to my elder brother and sister who only laughed at them and rather liked the sort of creepy feeling of mystery which came over them as they listened and nobody thought of poor little nan fanciful and nervous though i did not know it curled up in a corner and drinking in every word from that moment my life was spoilt i did not distinctly remember the stories i mixed them up in my mind in a dreadful jumble and never thought of their not being true i grew so nervous that i hardly dared go upstairs alone even in broad daylight and i shut my eyes if i happened to be alone in a room where there were portraits rather than see them staring at me as i fancied they did but all this was nothing to the terrors of the night of which even in my old age i hardly like to think i slept in a little room of my mother's and till now i had been very proud of my own nest but all that was past i now shivered and shuddered at the thought of bedtime and would have done anything to avoid it no one understood me the nurses called me naughty even dear mamma thought my temper spoiled and no wonder for i told nobody of my secret trouble i think it was my fear of being laughed at and here i would beg of big brothers and sisters never to laugh at little ones terrors however silly try to explain them away to comfort the poor tiny sufferers but 
never laugh at them at last happily for my life and health the secret came out and it was in this way there was a recess in the wall near my bed it had shelves and went up nearly to the ceiling in fact it was like a cupboard with the doors off and on the top shelf stood a curious vase about the size of a rather fat flower-pot of dark blue and white old dutch stoneware i had never noticed it for in the daytime very little light fell on this corner and i was seldom in the room except at night one evening i was put to bed as usual feeling rather less frightened for there were friends dining at the castle and the sound of the piano came up to my room and cheered me leave the door open please i like the music i said and nurse did so and thus with less shivering and heart throbbing than usual i fell asleep when i woke quite suddenly perhaps the shutting of the great door or the guests carriages driving away had wakened me all was quite dark and silent i shut my eyes and tried to go to sleep again but it was no use i was quite awake and unconsciously i opened my eyes what was that i have said it was quite dark but up there high up there was a light that i had not seen till i turned my head and there in the light or oh, did the light come from it was a round staring white face grinning down at me i saw its eyes its mouth all its features it seemed to me the goblin face by which a wicked man in one of old effie's stories had been haunted i stared at it like a bird at a serpent though my heart had stopped from terror then gradually i saw that it was moving and that roused me with a fearful shriek i dashed out of bed getting by some instinct to the door and knew nothing more till an hour or two later i opened my eyes to find myself in mamma's arms for she was just coming into her room to go to bed when i fell into them it was all explained to me there was a tiny window on to the stairs high up in that corner of the room through which the light of mamma's candle had shone on to the old delft vase and even made it seem to move as she stepped upwards i was sensible enough for my age to understand and to believe it but all the same i was ill for a long long time and the cloud over my childhood never entirely faded till childhood was left behind still good comes with ill i might never during the few years she was left with us have learned to know my darling mother as i did her wonderful tenderness and understandingness had it not been for my vision of the goblin face the old vase now stands near my bedside where night and morning i can see it and recall the memories connected with it and there i hope it will stand till i die <laughs>